This is Data Communications and Network One class, 0125327, at Department of Electrical Engineering, Faculty of Engineering, Kasesa University, by Associate Professor Dr. Usana Tantulavitz. This is Lecture 24, and it will be the last lecture for the um, e-learning. Okay? Um, we have um, also Data Communications and Network 2 okay, class uh, at Kasesa University, so the other, other um, information on this network, okay, will be covered in that class by another professor. Now, if you are taking the class of um, Data Communications and Network 1 at Department of Electrical Engineering at Kasesa University, we will have another 45 hours of activities, okay, so the material is um, just up to this lecture. Thank you. Let's look at um, this one is chapter 12, part 3, uh, which is the Internet Protocol, the um, IP version 6, okay? And uh, chapter 13, which is the congestion control. Okay. Okay, we will continue from last time. Okay, what is the uh, IP version 6, okay? This is, is this a successor of uh, the new, newer version of IP version 4, and it was a uh, world launch um, on July, on June 6, okay, 2012, so about four years ago. And um, it is necessary, okay, because the IPv4 is not enough to provide the IP address for every user, okay? Because IPv4 uses 32-bit address, which is high of a lot, okay, 2 to the 32, so at first it was thought to be enough. However, it is not enough. Okay, so the IPv6 use 128-bit address. Um, so this is like should be more than enough. Okay, because it's very um, two to the 128 is very large number. It should be able to um, provide the global internet address for all all devices of all users on Earth. Okay. The Usually, okay, we describe the IPv6 address in terms of eight groups, okay, of four hexadecimal digits. So instead of the decimal, okay, we'll change to hexadecimal to save space, okay. Hexadecimal is base 16, okay. And we separate not by the dot, but by colons. For example, we have this, so 2001, this is hexadecimal number, and then colon, 0, B, D, 8. Again, hexadecimal number is A equal to 10, B is 11, okay, for hexadecimal. So A equal to 10, B is 11, C is 12, D is 13, E is 14, and F is seven is fifteen. Okay, so when you see the number like zero D B, sorry zero D B eight. So this is actually zero is like zero 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 zero. D is um thirteen, right? So thirteen is um here thirteen. Okay, and then B is eleven. Eleven. No, 13 is, sorry, 13 is 5, sorry, again, 0, 0, 0, 0, um, 13 is 5 and 8, okay, and then B is 11, 11 is 8 and 3, okay, and then 8 is 1, 0, 0, 0, okay, so this 0, D, B, 8, okay, base, exactly small, is correspond to uh, zero 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 zero, the first bit, the first um, digit, one one zero one, one zero one one, and one zero zero zero. Okay, so this is the sixteen bit representation of the four hexadecimal digit. Okay, so if you look at this, this is the, the second one. Is what I just show you. Okay, so you kind of have the kind of have the alphabet. Okay, of A up to E. Um, in combination with the numbers, okay. So, and you have eight groups of this. So, it's kind of long, okay. 
and the address is not case sensitive. So the capital D or the small, the small, small case D is the same. Okay, so uh, capital D B or small D B, small case D B are considered the same. In the on February okay, 3rd, 2011, in the ceremony in Miami, okay, the Internet SI numbers authority SI the last batch of the five address okay, blocks to the regional Internet registry. So this is officially depleting the global pool of completely fresh blocks of address. So it's like um, all, all address are used okay, because it's happy SI to our organizations already. Okay? So each of these, each of these blocks, okay, represent about 16.7 million people, million possible address, okay, for about a total of 80 million potential address combined. Now, basically what I'm trying to say here is that uh, it's gone, okay, all of the internet address in version 4, okay, it's gone. So we have to use kind of a longer address and we increase um, from 32 bits, okay, to 128 bits, okay, so uh, many times, you know, may, um, much, much longer and um, a lot, a large number of the address, okay, available in IPv4, in IPv6. Anyway, um, in the IPv4 address, okay, I want to show you, okay, if you have to have the 172.16.254.1, right? So 172 is 10101100, okay? So you can convert to binary, and 16 is this. So this is one byte equal to eight bits, okay? So the total is consists of four bytes because it's of the decimal number is represented, can be represented by one byte, okay? Now let's look at IP. V6 address, this is in hexadecimal decimal format, okay? So each of the, as I showed you a little bit before, um, the 2001, okay, the first group of the eight groups, okay, of the hexadecimal decimal digits, um, each of the group consists of 16 bits, okay? So you have eight times uh, six, sorry, eight groups, okay? Each group is 16 bits. So you have eight times 16, okay? which is much, much longer. If you can look at this, the address is much, much longer. And if you uh, have one more bit, it means that you have twice the number, right? So if you have like this, uh, almost 100 more bits, okay? So you have a, a lot more. You, you can try by yourself, okay? Two to the 128. Probably you cannot uh, use uh, the normal calculator. Anyway, since the IPv6 is um, very long, um, there are ways to abbreviate it, okay? The first one is to remove the leading zeros, okay, from one or more groups of the hexadecimal digit. So this is done to all groups, okay, that have leading zeros. For example, the group the, in the eight groups, okay, the group that is 00442, okay, we, we omit the first two zeros and we write it as 42. Okay, and also you can combine consecutive sections of one or more zeros, okay, using double colon to denote that you have deleted something, you have omitted some of the sections, but you can use the double colon only once, okay, to not uh, have the confusion on how long the double colon uh, represent, okay. So, for example, this one is valid, okay, because there's one double colon and you know that you have to have eight groups, right? So you count 2001, okay, this is the first group. DB8 is the second group, okay? Uh, one is the third group and then two is the fourth group. So you have to have eight groups, but you have only four groups here. So the double colon here has to represent four groups of zeros, okay? So this is how you know. But if you have two double columns, you don't know um, what is the length of the first double colon, the, the, the zeros, the number of zeros in the first double colon, and the number of zeros in the second double colon. So, you, so this is not permitted. Okay. Now, an example of the rules, you have um,
Okay, you have the address like this. Ah, okay, you have the address like this. So, so after the first one, you, you delete the, the leading zeros, okay? So, so you delete this zeros, okay? So you, you get DB8. And then you delete this uh, leading zero, you get zero, zero, zero here. And then this one, you cannot, you cannot change. It has to be the same, okay? Because the zero come in the back. Uh, at the end, you cannot take it out. But this is a zero in front, you can take it out, okay? So you get only 42. Then these zeros, okay, you can combine. You can, like, take it out and leave only double zeros, double colon here, okay? Double colon here. So it's end up as the address like this, okay? Which is much shorter, okay, than the first one, okay? The first one, initial is this. The after shorten, after abbreviation is this one. Now, what is the main difference, okay, between the IPv4 and IPv6? Okay, uh, the first thing is that IPv6 is header is much simpler, so it have less processing time, okay, it increases speed um, of the like of the router to route um, the the packet, okay, because it has um, fewer fields inside of the header. And it has much larger space. Oh, this one I have to the 128 is approximately 3.4 times 10 to the 138 addresses. Okay, so there are so so this allow approximately 4.8 times 10 to the 28 address for each of the seven billion people alive in 2011, which means that everyone can have about 10 to the 28 uh, addresses, okay, I, IP addresses. So if you want to use like device, all of the device, uh, mobile device, okay, you, you are allowed to, you can, you can use all of that, okay, with IPv6. And also, if you have heard of the Internet of Things, okay, that you put the IP on all of the things, okay, then for one people, one, one person, you may need to have a lot of the, um, you may need to have a, a lot of the, all of the uh, internet address, right? Okay, because you have to put it into your um, refrigerator in the smart home, okay? So everything is smart. So that is like internet of things and, and your computer with the, your printer, um, your, your light, okay? Lighting in the house, the, the control of the lighting, okay? So everything, can, you can have the IP address. Um, so by, by saying that um, it is, uh, the IPv6 header is simpler, so as, as I said, it, uh, it contains fewer fields than IPv4 header, there's processing time, um, and also you can use the IPv6 to use exten extensible um, headers, which means that if you need extension header to provide more functions to the IP data card, you can, you can add them, okay? If you need this, type of header, you just add them. If you don't need it, you don't have to use it. Just use the basic header. Okay, so some of the fields that are omitted um, in IPv6, that used to be in IPv4. Okay, sometimes you may need it, so you just add them. Okay, and if you have uh, future functions, um, then you can add them also, okay, without the, without redesign the header format. You don't have to redesign design the header format again, okay, because you just put the um, the new fields in the extension part of the header. Um, that is another protocol called the Internet Control Message Protocol. Okay, this is the way to transfer message, okay, from the routers and other hosts to a host, okay. This is not the IP, uh, this is not the one that like sending data, okay, but usually it's like feedbacks, the problems in of the, inside of the network, okay. For example, of the control information is the destination unreachable, okay? Think of the mail, um, snail mail, the, the mail that you send to the post office. Sometimes you get the return um, letters, okay? They say uh, destination cannot be reached, okay? So this is unreachable to tell the source, time exceeded, okay? Too long, okay, time out. Parameter, problem, parameter problems, source quench. The source quench means uh, like flow control, okay? Ask the source to reduce the flow. 
um, so that the receiver can receive it um, with no problem, okay? It doesn't come too fast. Redirect means that a router advises the host that should go to another route, okay, to reach the destination. Like, um, if you know the, the radio, okay, the 100 megahertz um, traffic radios, okay, they tell you uh, there is an accident, okay, on this route on Vipower D, and you should maybe go to Port Dutin instead, something like that, at that time. Uh, they have an echo, an echo reply, okay, to test if these two uh, devices or two entities, okay, can send signal to each other, so can, can it communicate? So this one sent to, another, to this one, and this one sent like echo and an echo reply, okay, that, oh, I get it, okay, and you can connect, send data to me, um, communicate to me. They have the timestamp, timestamp reply, address mask request, the address mask is what I show you, so that it knows like how much is the subnet um, part and how much is the actual host identification, so the request and reply. And this is um, some of the format, okay? You can look at it later by yourself, okay? This is not uh, difficult, okay? There's uh, the type, the code, the checksum. The checksum is like error correcting code, okay? So it's the priority check code, something like that, um, that you put here. Usually you use cyclic code here. And then you have the IP header, 64 bits of the original datagrams, something like that. This is uh, destination and reachable. Private problems, uh, redirect, okay, echo, echo, reply. So identif have identifier, sequence number, okay. If you want to know about this, you can, I mean, search in the internet, okay, of what some of the fields mean, okay. So this is kind of sending an address, ask for address, mask, and then send address marks back. Okay, so that's um, chapter 12, okay. The next chapter that we talked about is chapter 13, which is uh, congestion control in the data, data network, okay? We'll talk a little bit about this, okay? To give you an idea of um, the congestion that occurred and how to control it, okay? So what is congestion? Congestion is like traffic jam, okay? So it's occur when there are too many networks, okay? It's, sorry, too many packets present in some part of the network. For example, a lot of, a lot of cars at the, um, the monument at the Anusauri Chai, okay? The Victory no Monument, too many people deadlock, okay, around the, around the monument, around the circle, okay? So, or maybe some uh, problem with this link, okay? So, congestion occurs, okay? Because they can maybe send with slow, lower speed. Now let's let's look at um, packet switching. Okay, in this chapter, we will consider the packet switching network as in a new way. Okay, as a network of queues. Like you have many many queues in the in the node. Okay, of the packet switching network. Okay, um, at the node there will be two buffers for each of the links. So if you have like for example, you have five links. So you have for each link, you have two buffers, so you have a total of 10 buffers here. Um, for each other, you have the, the two buffers are the input um, buffer and then the, like, input buffer and then output buffer, something like that. And um, now, if the packet comes in faster than the node can transmit out, then the buffer will run out, right, because the buffer is limited space. So if it gets in very fast, but get out slower, then you will lose some of the packet, okay? Because um, the, when the buffer is full, then the rest of the packet that come in cannot have any place, don't have any place to store it. So you have to discard it. So this is two other nodes, input buffer and output buffer, okay? Input buffer is this way. So other node get in, okay? So you see that input buffer is Going from going in okay from right to left okay this is input buffer and the output buffer is getting from switch from the another node okay and then um, send out
So this is input buffer. Input buffer means that getting in here, this is input buffer. Output buffer is like go from here, like switch from here, okay? Or switch, uh, switch from here, something like that, okay? So from other link, okay, to go out, it will get into the output buffer, and then the upper, and then it go out this way, okay? So this is the input buffer and the output buffer. And there's a queue because the inside of the node. There will be Q, right? So this is like the package coming in. So just put here. Maybe like uh, packet A, B, C, D, something like that. Okay, so it just input inside of the buffer. So this is like a queue. Okay. And then there is queuing theory. Okay, if you consider the network as a packet of queue, uh, as a network of queue, then uh, you can apply the queuing theory. But the queuing theory is kind of beyond the scope of this class. Um, usually we talked about it in the graduate um, levels, okay? Um, and, but, but when you study um, the queuing theory, you know that um, how much is they have the like, service time, like how much you need to, um, to process, okay? And there will be like the kind of um, the probability that you can like how much you can accept, okay, the the network and the delay, okay, the the delay that, like you have to um, to think about all the probabilities and the time uh, that is needed at, at every step. And if there's too too many um, too many packets, okay, coming in, um, basically it will get congested, okay, and you and you also will lose some of the. Um, some of the data, so you try to prevent um, that from occurring, okay? So you try to um, tell like the source that avoid this link, um, like the, as I say, the traffic control, the traffic um, radio station, the 100 megahertz, that tell you that um, this one has an accident on this road, okay, and you should avoid them, something like that. Look at the ideal performance, okay, of the uh, network, okay? You define the throughput um, as the number of packets delivered to the destination and system. So the one that delivers successfully is called throughput, okay? The overload is the number of packets transmitted by source and system. So what the source sending out is overload. What is actually arrived at the destination is throughput, okay? So if you have, um, a network like this, okay, so the output queue, okay, from form 4, okay, we go this way and go into the input queue of node number 5. The output queue of node number 5, okay, can go to the input queue of node number 3 and number 6 and also number 4, okay, but in this picture, um, in this link, go um, from the output queue of node number 5 to the input queue of node number 6, okay. Um, let's look at the ideal network utilization, okay. For the normalized load, if um, look at the no normalized throughput, okay. So if the offer load, okay, is low, okay, is zero, okay, so there's no throughput, right? When the offer load is increased, then the throughput is increased linearly. This is the ideal case, okay. It will go up linearly with the offer load, and then when it go to one hundred percent of the load, that um, when it say of the load, then the throughput will will be 100%, okay, which is um, sending out everything that have been received. But if it's more than the, more than 100%, if the load is too much, then it will just send out 100%, okay? And the rest cannot be transmitted, it will be discarded. And if you look at the delay, at the first part, okay, delay, when the overload is small, the delay is small, okay? Very, there, there are some delay, okay, but the delay is small. But when the, when the 
load go, okay, maybe 80, 90 percent, you see that the delay go up indefinitely, um, like um, very high, okay, very high delay, okay, because it gets congested. This is the ideal case. So the delay, okay, when the load of the network increase, okay, this delay is increased based on the queuing, the queuing time, okay, that you have to uh, to be in the in the buffer and wait to be uh, sent out, okay, to the network, okay, okay, and the load is exceeds when the load exceeds the network capacity, the delay go up to in infinity, okay. Because there are more packets coming in than go out, okay. So a lot of people coming in uh, want to send, okay. But you can send very um, with a smaller number of packets, okay. So the queue will be longer and longer without limit, okay? and the pack packet will be discarded. Okay. Now let's look at the practical performance, okay. In this case, the load, okay. If there is no congestion, you have linear, um, linear line here, okay. The load coming in is the throughput coming out, okay, it's the same. But when you become a moderate congestion, like a little bit of the traffic jam, then the load coming in, but the throughput coming out is lower than the load that is coming in, okay, because some, oh, some of them may not arrive on time, okay, uh, before time out, for example. And uh, for severe congestion, okay, you see that the throughput go down very quickly, Okay, until the throughput is zero, which means that when the throughput is zero here, at the tail here, it means that um, no packet is arriving at the destination because uh, because it's traffic, like traffic jam, right? Very congested and all of the packet wait in the queue for too long before time out, okay? And they, they never arrive at the destination. So if look at the delay, okay, the average delay for all packets, okay, will go up to infinity if the load is is uh, congested, if, if it's kind of um, getting congested. However, um, for the packets that are delivered, because some of the packet will be thrown away, right, and discarded, because it's time out or, it's, uh, or it's the, the, the buffer is filled up, okay, um, so there will be the some packet that is, uh, that are delivered, so there will be kind of um, taper off of the delay over there. Okay, so the practical case at small load, okay, performance is similar to the ideal case. Uh, but at high, higher ro load, okay, the, the rate will go out slower than the, the, than the rate that is, um, that is getting in. And at very high ro load, okay, throughput is almost virtually zero, okay. In the severe con congestion state, okay, what happened is that they have very long delay, okay, lost packets, okay, because buffers are used up. The buffer is filled and it's full and the packet coming in cannot get into the buffer. So since it's lost a lot of, a lot of packets due to time out and because buffer are few, are full, okay, so there will be more attempts to send the same data. So retransmission of the same data again and again, okay, in order to, like you re reload the website, okay, again and again, because it doesn't come up, okay. So you get higher offer load for the same data and become lower and lower throughput, because it's retransmission of the same thing. Okay, so we want to avoid the, we want to avoid the severe congestion state, okay. So we need congestion control, okay, like what we try to do in a, in the traffic, okay, in the real traffic on the road. Okay, examples of congestion controls is, the first one is routing, okay, so you assign higher cost for the congested link for my congestion, so you want um, in the network, okay, so if this is congested, you say it's high, higher cost, so when you do the least cost routing algorithm or the routing that uh, consider the cost um, of the link, okay, you will not choose that part, okay, we use, we choose other part instead that has a lower cost, okay, so this is working, this work for my congestion. 
The second one is black pressure, okay, like the fluid in the pipe. So you kind of pressure, put the pressure, and go back to the source, okay. So when the node is congested, it's so that the traffic coming in, okay, and and it, until it reaches the source, so from the destination, okay, pressure back to the source. But this work only with connection oriented network, okay, that allow hop to hop flow control, such as X25. And but X25 is kind of an um, kind of an old protocol, okay, and not uh, not um, not many, I mean, people are not like using it um, anymore, okay? Because it have a lot of um, like hop by hop flow control for every for every hop. For, so if you have many many hops inside of the network, then it very um, take a long time, okay, to reach the destination. And most of the time, you don't have um, much errors, so you don't have to do error controls. Um, much okay, so this may not um, be very, very efficient to use X25 anyway. But if you use something like that, you can do the blood pressure to do the flow control uh, that link from the destination to the next node and then the next node to the next um, to the and go back okay, go back until the, the node that um, connected to the source and then do the flow control. The third one is to discard some packet, okay? If it will not reach anyway, just throw away, okay? So if the packet, even though it's not time out, but if it will not arrive, okay, at the destination before time out, okay, it's better to discard it to reduce the load, okay? So you know, um, okay, maybe time out is another 10 seconds, okay? But you still need to go for many, many nodes, okay, to reach the destination, and you think it's not, I mean, it's not, uh, it will not reach in time, okay? So you just ignore it, discard it before time out, okay? To so reduce um, the number of packets that are still circulating inside of the network, okay? So that the one that have ch a chance to arrive on time, okay, will have a better chance to arrive, okay? Because the congestion will be um, lower. Um, the fourth one is implicit congestion signaling. This case is like when congestion occurs, okay, the packet will have long delay and this or discarded, right? So if the source knows, okay, that this happened, if the source knows that there is a delay or uh, the packets are lost, okay, it will know that oh, definitely it have to have congestion occurs, okay? So they should slow um, reduce the the flow that it transmit the data out, okay? So reduce the the data rate transmitted out, okay? Um, the next one is explicit congestion signaling. The first one, the implicit, is like the, the source learn from the what is happening, um, like implicitly, like um, it's like oh packet loss, okay, so this should happen, something like that. But it didn't, it, it wasn't told outright that directly or directly that um, you should slow down the rate because congestion, okay. But explicit congestion signaling, in this one, the network tell the source directly, okay about the congestion. So there's two, two, um, two techniques, okay? The backward explicit congestion signaling and uh, another one is forward explicit congestion signaling, okay? For the backward, the network will notify the source by put the information about the congestion into the packet that go to the opposite direction of the congestion. So it will send um, like A sent to B, okay? A send to B, but along the way there will be like other node, right? So if it's um, the backward, okay, so they will put like the congestion information, okay, inside of the network that go this way. This is source, this is destination. So it's kind of tell the Oh, okay, sorry. This is, um, they are backward and forward, right? So if it is congested, let's look at this this way. Suppose this is congested, congested area.
So packet getting in here, okay? You put the you put the congestion info in the packet that go uh, into the um, the congested area, okay? This is called forward forward explicit, okay? Um, congestion notification, but if you put into the network that going out, so congestion um, information put into the network that go out of the congested area, okay? This is called backward explicit congestion notification, okay? So the backward, the network notify the source, insert the congestion information into the packet, going the opposite direction of the congestion. For the forward, the network notify the destination, okay? For the forward, notify the destination. By insert the congestion information into the packet, okay? Going to the direction of the congestion or the, to the destination. And the destination can put like, can send something like acknowledgement, um, to the source, okay, to um, to tell the source that this is congested, okay. So that's the end of chapter thirteen, and also the end of the um, the lectures of, of e-learning for data communications and network one class, okay. So anyway, if you are taking class in Kaseh uh, State University here, then we have to. Uh, do like a lot of activities for another 45 hours, okay? Thank you.